Hello and welcome to another episode of He Says, She Says Film Reviews. I'm Dave G. And I'm Lee G. And tonight we're looking at the latest movie in the Conjuring universe, the Conjuring the Devil Made Me Do It. Now, this has got a few firsts um, when it comes to Conjuring movies. It's the first Conjuring movie that James Wan didn't direct, but the director, Michael Chaves, um, who's involved with this one, he did actually direct The Weeping Woman, which was set in the Conjuring universe, so he he's not exactly um, new to this universe. Same, the writers that worked on this film, James Wan wrote the story, but it, there was a different screenwriter. He'd also previously worked in the Conjuring universe, but probably on a bit of a sad point, this was the first movie where they didn't actually have Estelle Warren working as a, um, a consultant because she passed away, um, unfortunately, just before the film started in production. So there's a lot of firsts um, with this movie that kind of takes it away from the Conjuring universe, but at the same time, it, it still keeps very similar storyline-wise. Um, again, it revolves around Ed Warren, played by Patrick Wilson, and Lorraine Warren, played by um, Vera Farmiga. Um, but this time... They're called in to do an exorcism on a young boy, uh, David uh, Glatzel, played by Julian Hilliard. Now, um, David's older sister, Debbie, played by Sarah Catherine, is engaged to be married to Arnie, played by Rory O'Connor. Um, something happens during the exorcism, and... Very, very soon afterwards, Arnie is charged with murder after an incident, and he brings Lorraine and Ed in to try and prove that, literally, as the title says, the devil made him do it. Now, you're a big fan of the Conjuring universe. Yes, I am. What did you think of this one, the third outing um, with the Conjuring, but I think it's up to about eight if you include all the Annabelles, the Nun, and the Weeping Woman in all of that as well. I like that um, every story um, has a similarity to others, but also is so different. And um, obviously the story of the Warrens is based on true stories, as you mentioned earlier. Um, You know, we've got... um, stories coming from them but also they've had input into um, the stories as well in the past. I think that it's really intriguing knowing that it's um, based on a true story and I think that um, these days society um, really struggles with um, the thought of the devil and of God and um, with these stories you can just imagine You know, if we had a court case here in Australia where we live um, and you were trying to say that the devil made you do it, it, straight away it would go down the mental health path or if someone um, has psychosis or if they've taken substances, um, some sort of drug um, where they're hallucinating um, or if um, the murders occurred from, you know, revenge or it's been... Um, premeditated, all those sorts of things. And I think um, even to think about the storyline of um, of an incident where it ends up in court and, you, and you're trying to say the devil made you do it, um, it's so complex because straight away you're relying on people being open um, to considering if the devil's real or if the devil really could make someone do that. Um, so yeah, I think watching this movie, um, it really does have that intriguing tone to it because, um, for example, I have a faith and I, I believe in God and the devil. And I think that in the community, as a community, um, that would be shot down straight away. And so you feel for the character who is in court and his lawyer is not wanting to even go down that path um, because she has her thoughts on you know what will be accepted in court and what will not and of course her reputation whether she brings something to the court that says 
that the devil is real and the reaction of people and then what outcome it would be um, for the character Arnie but in real life the person who's being charged um, what kind of outcome would they get um, if the community is hearing that the devil's being blamed um, I like the way that they've portrayed this in the movie that they've um, they've shown obviously um, that this to, that this is real in their eyes I think that Vera does an amazing job um, in of the character of Lorraine Warren and it shows her spiritual giftings in um, sensing, seeing, hearing, feeling um, what's happened in an incident um, and where she's given the opportunity to visit the site where a murder's happened or to have some information and to then um, be able to, I suppose, um, show what the story really has been or what has really happened in that situation. I think she portrays that so well. Um, I think that the boy um, Julian Hilliard um, who plays David Glazelle, is that right? Yeah. Um, as a young actor he does an extraordinary job um, of firstly being involved in an exorcism um, that it does look real and it does seem like that's happening in the movie um, you know that kind of performance would be really hard to um, to have people believe that that's happening um, and Patrick Wilson as always as Ed Warren he does an extraordinary job of um, being supportive of his wife but also having certain giftings where he can help expose the real story um, yeah you see some glimpses um, of um, the other movies for example you get a glimpse of Annabelle in the um, the glass cabinet as usual and things and like that that tie together and the nun um, which just gives that added you know you know this is part of the series and and this feels <laughs> like it is part of the series um, and you kind of, as a viewer, if you're into the series, get excited just to see those glimpses as well. What do you think? Yeah, um, I love those small little things. Um, one that I noticed was one of the bunches of flowers that gets delivered to Ed when he's in hospital mm -hmm. is actually from the family in the first Conjuring film that they helped. And of course, um, Father Gordon, played by Steve Coulter, um, he's been in nearly all of the films. I think he like and played a a major part in one of the Annabelle films. Um, I, I've always kind of had a weird relationship with the Conjuring films because when I watched the original Conjuring film, I thought it was pretty average. And then it was only when I went back and watched it a few years later um, that I really fell in love with it. I've, I've always been a huge fan of the Annabelle films. I absolutely love them, including um, my favorite being Annabelle Goes Home. I... I love that 1970s vibe that they brought to that film, and um, I just really, really love that film. And I think this one almost becomes one of my favourite Conjuring films, because um, despite the fact that it has a different um, screenwriter with uh, um, David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick working on it, it actually felt like it went further into the Wilson, uh, into the Warrens this time. Um we saw more of Lorraine's psychic abilities, including a brilliant scene out in the forest where they take her to a, a murder scene and she's able to put herself into that scene. Um, but also, um, the, it, it's a frail Ed Warren this time around because he's having health issues. And I think that actually in, enhanced the characters because... There's been a couple of times in this universe in the past where I've almost felt like the characters are almost like superheroes and they're indestructible. I kind of liked that both characters were were kind of frailer in, um, in this and that you were actually more worried um, about them and what could happen kind of things. Um, so yeah, I really, really liked that. And I also felt that Michael Chaves, the director here, 
did the same as what they did in um, in Annabelle Comes Home, and he really played up the fact that these movies are set during the 70s. There was a lot of references to 70s pop culture, um, like things like Elvis Presley and stuff was referred to more, which, um, which I really, really liked because I thought that hasn't always come to the fore um, in these films. I think also... Um, the acting performances of um, of uh, Rory O'Connor, I think he does a really, really good job as well. Um, especially the um, scenes when he's in prison, I thought those scenes worked um, remarkably well. Um, yeah, and also Sarah Catherine Hook as well. I think she played a really good part in this film. But yeah, I I like the fact that this movie felt like it explored the characters a little bit more rather than just the the supernatural world. Did you get that feeling too? Yeah. And I'm not sure if it was as, what you'd say, scary as other Conjuring movies. Um, but there was, <clears throat> there was, de- there was depth to the story, I would say. Um, and of course there's usually, um, some kind of item, um, that ends up back in the Warren's, I'll call it museum, but yeah. storeroom um, of um, evil um, items, I suppose. Um, so, you know, that that's a continuing storyline through all of the yeah. Conjuring movies. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, if you're looking for just scares or, or just jumpy kind of scenes, yeah. I don't... I don't know that it was as jumpy, um, but certainly, you know, the exorcism scenes and, um, you know, heading towards the end of the movie, of course, there's there's things that come out of the story where um, it's more intense and uh, a little bit more thriller, I suppose, where you're, you're wondering what's going to eventuate and happen. Um, there's still those moments where... Um, you're kind of holding your breath and waiting for that outcome. Um, I know when we were in the cinema that the night that we saw it, it was so freezing cold. Um, it really added to the atmosphere of yeah. the movie as well. Um, and that's because of um, the COVID things at the moment where they have to um, have more air coming into cinemas. Yeah, it was so cold. And, um, you know, our friends and us were sitting there shivering the whole movie Um but it made certain parts of the movie, it felt like we were kind of there because it was so cold. Um, but, yeah, I think some people might be just a little disappointed with, with without the jumpy scenes. Um, but, again, there was more depth to, I think, Vera's character again, um, the Warrens and... Um, you always you do feel for her. Um, you feel for her because um, Lorraine Warren. You see the how tired and exhausted she can become, and even in other Conjuring movies, um, that when she um, uses her spiritual gift, I'll call it that. Um, I think you called it a psychic gift before. Um, I don't know that I like that term because psychic doesn't usually um kind of connect with god exposing yeah it's um, probably she's more a medium really yeah yeah i would say spiritual gift i think i mean everyone will interpret differently and i don't know how the writers have um written it but um yeah i'll call it a spiritual gift because i feel like it's a connection from god um you can see you know they use crosses and holy water and um, it seems like a Catholic um, exorcism. Um, and so she, when she uses those gifts, she becomes drained and it can be dangerous for her at times um, of whether she's even going to come out of the story she's in and um, come back to the real world. And we've seen that happen to her before. Um, so, yeah, I guess when you're remembering that this is based on a real-life story, um, you have empathy for her and um, you can see that she's really wanting to help people who are stuck in um, 
situations with the devil or evil, whatever you want to use or call it. Um, and she puts herself out there. She puts her um, herself and her family at risk. And they their family almost agrees to, um, to that risk to help other people. Um, and so I have an admiration for someone that will use their spiritual gift at the risk of themselves. Um, yeah. Yeah. I had a bit of a laugh in this movie at one point when the Warrens judge somebody else for keeping evil items in their house. Um, especially when you consider the events of um, Annabelle comes home <laughs> with their own family. So, um, yeah. there's uh, My biggest fear with this movie was that it was going to be completely different because James Wan... Um, didn't have much of an involvement other than writing the story. Um, but I didn't really notice that. And I think they went with the right director. As I said before, um, the screenwriters that that worked here worked with James Wan on the other films. Um, they worked on The Conjuring 2, and I think they worked on The Nun and films like that. Same, Michael Chaves, the director... Um, he's already been part of the universe in that he's film he's directed one of the other movies. So even though he's never directed a Conjuring film again, he's well and truly versed in this universe. So I didn't notice that as a um, as a an, an ultra big change. I've got to say, um, whereas sometimes when a as we mentioned before, there's been a um, in one of our other episodes, there's been a pretty big drop-off in Saw movies since James Wan and Lee Winnell left the franchise. So, um, yeah, I didn't notice that at all um, with this film. And I guess that leads me to the question, what are you going to give this one out of five? I'm going to give it four out of five. I think the only thing I would like to have seen more of is the actual court case and the lawyer being a bit more involved and trying to gather even more information herself. Um, you know, there, there's a line in the movie and it's on the ads as well, um, but it, it refers to, in a court case, you know, God's acknowledged um, at the start of every hearing kind of thing um, and there's an opposite of everything. So if God's acknowledged, then the devil needs to be acknowledged in the court case as well or in the court. Um, but... I suppose with the background I have with working with prisoners, I was really drawn to, you know, it's about a court case, it's about a boy on trial, but we didn't see much of that. And I would have liked to have seen a little more of that incorporate, incorporated into the storyline as well as um, the storyline of the Warrens. And I suppose that's just a personal preference for me. So that's why I give it four out of five. The rest I really loved, of course, and I look forward to another Conjuring movie. Yeah, I'm giving it four out of five as well. Like I said before, I, I really like the fact that this movie kind of, um, it felt more like an Ed and Lorraine kind of story. There's been a couple of Conjuring movies where it has almost felt like the film revolves around the evil more than them. And I really like the fact that they seem more like everyday people in this film. And I love the fact that this movie embraces its environment as in the 70s, just like Annabelle Comes Home did. So I'm giving this one four out of five as well. Um, so that's it for this episode of He Says, She Says Film Reviews. I've been Dave G. And I'm Lee G. And we'll be back soon with another episode.